So uh, this uh, one hour webinar will focus on the performance of Silpro in aquafids with a focus on growth performance on salmonids, including results on Atlantic salmon and rainbow trout. It is part of our final webinar series that includes three webinars in total, where we will share the results of the project as regards to product performance, which is today, uh, but also process performance in one week time and the environmental performance of process and product um, by the end of August. So today, uh, our webinar will be presented by two speakers. First, we will have a beer gear on Smarason from Matisse, who will drive you through the activities performed in the project on the testing of Silpro, our protein rich ingredient in Atlantic salmon. And second, uh, Ricardo Ekme from Arbium, who is senior, senior vice president of nutrition and product development, will introduce you to the results we have obtained on rainbow trout with Silpro. And uh, this product was uh, produced in the frame of the project. Uh, these two presentations will be followed by a Q&A session. So to ask a question, please use the Q&A module available at the bottom of the Zoom window. The speakers will uh, try to answer all the questions during the webinar, if time allows. Otherwise, we will follow up with you uh, via email. Uh, if you experienced any difficulties uh, to ask a question or any other matter during the webinar, you can always use the chat to reach out to the panelists and we will provide uh, assistance. Um, I also want to uh, let you know that this uh, webinar is uh, recorded. So uh, before we jump into the specific webinar, uh, we will share with you uh, an introduction video to present uh, the Silfit project um, in general. And then I will let uh, Birgir start uh, his presentation. Thank you all and uh, enjoy this, uh, this first webinar. Silfin is an international and multidisciplinary four-year project that is funded by the Biobase Industries Joint Undertaking. The project started in September 2017 and aims at scaling up Arbium's wood-to-food -food technology to convert wood residues into protein-rich feed ingredients comprised of single cell proteins called SCP and test it into aquaculture applications. This project gathers 10 partners all along the value chain from wood sourcing till fish feed manufacturing and testing to address the European protein gap. The project will demonstrate Arbium's technology at large scale and also prepare for industrial scale up. At Arbium, our wood to food solution brings wood into the food chain. And like many of the other feedstock being used for fermentation, wood is abundant, forests are increasing, doesn't compete with food crops, and it's available year round. It has robust and established supply chains. Our process technology has been validated in our lab and pilots. And thanks to the Seedfeed project, we are scaling it up to the demonstration level, getting ready to build our first commercial plant. Arbium process converts wood into food in two main steps. First, wood residues are broken down into sugar rich tree. Second, we perform a fermentation of the woody sugar to produce Silpro, our protein-rich ingredient that our partners test for aquafeed application. Arbium process is being demonstrated thanks to the expertise and the facilities of Bioprocess Pilot Facility and Biobase Europe Pilot Plant. The project includes the testing of the protein-rich ingredient for aquafeed applications. Martis receives batches of Silpro to perform nutritional analysis formulate feeds including this new protein source and design small scale and large scale trials to test its effects on salmon and tilapia. The Simpi project demonstrates a new value chain bridging the gap between forestry and aquaculture. It will expand the food production potential by valorizing a non-food resource and bringing it into the food chain. All right, should I start? Can you, can you see my slides? Yes, we see your slides. OK. 
Okay, great, great, great. Uh, full screen, yeah, it's in full screen. Right All right. So hello, everyone, and welcome. <clears throat> so as as Amelie said before, uh, my name is Birgir. Uh, I'm a project manager here at Matis, Icelandic Food and Biotech R&D, um, and we are a one of the partners in the in the Silfit project. Uh, I am going to present um, comparative performance of Silpro or Torola yeast in Salmonids results for for Salmon. So, as Amelie has already mentioned, uh, it, it it is a four-year project uh, aiming at the scaling up of Arbium's wood to food technology. Uh, our main activities in Matis in the project related to um, fish feed formulation and testing, and in particular, the objectives was uh, were the documentation of the nutritional quality and performance of Silpro, and that includes the information on nutrient content of the product, content of anti-nutritional factors, and content of undesirable substances, but also formulation of feeds for optimum or maximum inclusion, and uh, production of high quality feed and in vivo testing of uh, for salmon and tilapia. And in today's presentation, I will focus on the results obtained at small and large scale on fish feed formulation with Silpro and uh, testing in, in Atlantic salmon. Um, and also, as, as Amelie mentioned, um, if you're interested in the scale up of the wood to food process, there's also a webinar or an online event on that on, on June 29th and also for the environmental performance of Silpro and comparable proteins um, on August 31st. So if you're interested in that, uh, please make sure to, to sign up for those events. Uh, but we are going to talk about the um, trials that we did uh, with focus on salmons. So we started out with the, with the small scale, um, feed production for juvenile salmon and small scale growth trials with juvenile salmon um, and going up to uh, the larger scale um, with uh, post malt or adult salmon, uh, both yeah, growth feed production and, and growth trials. So if we start with the, with the small scale, uh, the Atlantic salmon trial. So this study was designed to demonstrate the nutritional performance of, of the Silpro product in comparison with conventional plant and animal protein sources. Uh, Atlantic salmon feeds were formulated with, with this ingredient as a complementary or replacement for fish meal and plant-based proteins at various inclusion rates. Uh, juvenile Atlantic salmon growth as well as gut microbiome of fish fat different diets were measured over the course of a, of a five-week trial period. Um, so the setup was, uh, we started with around one gram Atlantic salmon uh, with 20 per tank, temperature around nine degrees centigrade and uh, in fresh water. And as I said, five weeks, uh, diets were produced at Matis using cold pelletization and the trial was, was run in, in triplicate. Uh, the experimental diets, they were tested uh, in triplicate, as I said, um, randomly positioned in the, in the tank setup and fish were fed about six times each day. Um, diets were produced uh, in the following step. So mixing of all dry ingredients, milling uh, of the mix for homogenization and wet homogenization with fish oil and water, uh, formation of one millimeter feed strings in a, in a feed mincer, um, and then drying and crumbling of the dried strings into about 0 0.5 to 0 0.8 millimeter crumples. Uh, the crumples had comparable physical quality as commercial extruded pellets and fit nicely to the size of the fish they were, they were aimed for. Um, and the results, um, so this is for the fish meal replacement, um, the weight, uh, in grams of the fish fed different feed treatments uh, showed no significant difference after this 35 day growth period uh, when, when fish meal was replaced. And um, here you can see the results with the, uh, the plant 
plant mix, which was replaced. Uh, and I should actually go back two slides where we look at the formulation of the diet. So we can see on the left side bottom uh, where we are replacing the fish meal with 10 and 20% inclusion of the Silpro and on the right side uh, where fish meal was kept constant, but we were replacing uh, plant proteins, mainly con gluten meal and, and, uh, and wheat with 10 and 20% uh, of the Silpro. Um, and here with the plant mix, uh, we can actually observe improved growth, um, but not significantly better than the control. So we can say a slight improvement, uh, but there was no difference between control and the 20%. And the um, and as I mentioned, we also did uh, got microbiome study uh, and actually have submitted a paper on the topic. Um, I'm not going to go um, in depth into those results, but just um, just in short, we, we developed a, a novel protocol uh, for Atlantic salmon fry, as they can be challenging to extract and amplify DNA from. So it was developed especially for freshwater small salmon for 16S RNA extraction. And you can see amplification and, and sequence details in the paper. Uh, and the results of the gut microbiome um, so there was not a diversity impact for the fish meal replacement, but for the mixed diets with the plant replacement, uh, there was a fall in alpha diversity values for the, for the highest inclusion level. The mixed 10 was comparable with the control, but all diets supported significantly different gut microbiome communities, which we can see for um, the better diversity at higher taxonomic resolution. Uh, and the chains varied depending which protein was being replaced, for example, lactic acid bacteria uh, increased slightly when, re when replacing fish meal in, in a simple diet, but the numbers fell in the, in the mixed diets when plant proteins were replaced. But you can read more about that in, in the uh, submitted paper if you, if you are interested. So let's move on to the larger scale trials um, with uh, post-malt Atlantic salmon. Uh, so here we can see the, the feed formulation. So it was decided to keep uh, fish meal constant for, for all the diets at 15% um, and replacing um, Silpro or replacing plant protein mix, uh, which uh, was mainly from soy protein concentrate and wheat gluten, replacing that with Silpro at 10 and 20%. Um, and it was formulated to contain about 42% crude protein and 25% crude lipids. Uh, the production, so we produced um, four to five millimeter extrude, extruded pellet size, uh, formulated to contain, yes, as I said, 42% protein uh, as sinking pellets. So the production of the control diet and Silpro 10% were uh, stable and without any problems. Uh, the production of the 20% Silpro was uh, a little bit more unstable and fluctuation intensity was, was seen, but uh, nothing serious. But uh, the pellets in the end were of very good quality after, after the drying and the coating. Uh, so the setup of the trial, um, as I said, post-malt Atlantic Salmon um, uh, were run the trial ran for about 120 days. Uh, we started out with about 300 gram salmon distributed into nine tanks, about 65 per tank. And as I mentioned, we had this control feed and two experimental feeds with 10 and 20% inclusion of Silpro in triplicate tanks with temperature about 11 degrees and oxygen saturation always over 100%. And on average, the fish grew from 300 grams to about 1,100 grams over the 120 days. And <clears throat> the results, um, here we can see that um, there is no significant difference in weight gain, uh, specific growth rate or uh, condition factor or uh, feed conversion ratio. Although, uh, feed conversion ratio was, was pretty close to being significant. Um, and if you look at the first, uh, first graph on the top left, we can see the average weight gain 
uh, where the control fish uh, gained on average 778 grams, um, a 10% silt protein, 855 and 2811 grams. And the average condition factor on the right uh, is pretty similar. Uh, the feed conversion ratio uh, down to the left um, was, as I said, close to being significant. We can observe slight trend upwards from control up to 20. Uh, and on the specific growth rate, um, Silpro 10 and 20 were identical at 1.13%, a little bit higher than the, than the control. So overall, uh, it was a successful trial. Uh, with with uh, quite good results. Um, and here we can see to the left the, the feed consumption over the trial. Um, and to the right, we see a table uh, showing the chemical composition of the fillets, uh, where we could actually observe a significant difference in the fat content of the fillets um, from 11.3% in the control up to 40.3% in the in the Silpro 20% diet. Um, and actually, uh, I'm, I'm not showing the table with the, uh, with the composition of the uh, feed itself, but we could actually observe in the feed that the fat composition was actually increasing a little bit from the control up to 20%, uh, but nothing as we see see here, so it could explain this uh, increasing fat at least up to a certain point, uh, but not completely, I believe. And uh, as a conclusion, uh, I think that um, if, if, we, if we start with the Silpro as an ingredient in fish feed, um, sorry, yeah, we can see that um, it has a high protein content. Um, it has a balanced amino acid profile. Uh, there are no anti-nutritional effects that have been observed and no safety and allergenicity issues have been recorded so far at least. And with the Atlantic Salmon trials, um, there's no statistical difference in body weight gain up to at least 20% inclusion, uh, no difference in mortality across all the treatments, um, an improved specific growth rate at about 10% at inclusion is comparable up to 20% inclusion. And there was no statistical difference found regarding growth, uh, feed conversion ratio, and condition factors um, throughout the trials. So I think, you know, what, what we have done here is that we, we went from the uh, small scale, uh, small scale Atlant juvenile Atlantic salmon in freshwater with uh, pelleted feet, uh, and the scale up to the large scale um, saltwater uh, salmon um, with extruded feet, and all results point to the same direction that Silpro does not negatively affect the growth of Atlantic salmon in both fresh and saltwater phases, and. Um, and um, I think we, we can also add that the, the key findings of the gut microbiome showed that um, Silpro increasingly replaced, um, yeah, as Silpro increasingly replaced fish meal, the gut bacteria diversity score increased, although the increase was not significant between inclusion levels. Uh, but however, when Silpro increasingly replaced the plant protein, the gut bacteria diversity score decreased. And this decrease was significantly different between inclusion levels. But we are also doing um, analyzing right now uh, the gut microbiome from the from the adult trial, which unfortunately the results are not ready, but uh, uh, they will be uh, in the summer. So I think that's it for me. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I think I now hand it over to Ricardo. Perfect. Thank you so much, Birger. And uh, <clears throat> let's make sure I'm unmuted. And you are. Sure. Always a good first step. Sure. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Hopefully, everyone can see the slides. Someone yell at me if you cannot. 
Okay, so no one is yelling at me. So uh, thank you again to, to Birger and, and Matisse for the, for the fantastic work on Atlantic salmon. Uh, during the course of the Silphid project, uh, we generated quite a bit of material. Um, so, so we decided to leverage the material to really expand the scope of our aqua trials and go beyond what was just within the Silphid, uh, specified within the Silphid project. And part of that decision was to also evaluate Silpro uh, within the context of, of rainbow trout. So, so for us, why rainbow trout? Uh, certainly, uh, salmon does appear to be king from uh, um, uh, consumer standpoints, but trout does uh, appear to, to be second. Uh, this graph or this figure here on the right is getting a little long in the tooth. Um, but I, I, from everything I've seen, trout is still coming up as, as the number two aqua species in terms of value within the EU. So clearly there is uh, a, a tremendous impetus to ensure a, 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 a novel and, and high quality uh, feed supply for rainbow trout as well as Atlantic salmon. So, so with that, we, we leveraged uh, INRAI, uh, the French uh, Research Institute, uh, within the context of the Aqua Excel 2020 uh, program. Uh, so so uh, we certainly want to acknowledge their contributions for, for making this uh, trial possible. Um, but we leveraged the same lot of material that was used for the large-scale Atlantic salmon trial to also evaluate it uh, within rainbow trout. Uh, certainly, it was not a uh, in in post smolt um, uh, fish. In this case, we're we're looking at forty four uh, gram wish uh, gram fish to to begin with, uh, within a three hundred liter tank um, at seventeen degrees Celsius. In terms of treatment structure, we have five treatments uh, with three replicate tanks uh, replicate tanks per treatment with uh, thirty fish per replicate. So we're looking at uh, 90 fish total per treatment and 450 fish uh, overall. And for the course of this uh, trial, this was a 12 week trial, uh, which uh, we've observed that going a minimum of six weeks is necessary to, to really start to tease out significant differences, uh, particularly uh, particularly for, for growth performance. So, so as I mentioned, we have uh, five treatment groups with, within uh, this particular experiment. Uh, it, it, it is fairly analogous to what was done uh, for the Atlantic salmon trial. Um, uh, we had both a plant-based uh, series of diets as well as a fish meal-based series of diets with the key difference being certainly we, we don't have that sixth uh, treatment that was present within Atlantic salmon. So we don't have a 20% a uh, Silpro diet based on uh, based on on the fish meal. Uh, the the other key differences are are just the the level of, of fish meal inclusion. Whereas uh, the the fish meal based diet within Atlantic salmon certainly had much much higher uh, levels of fish meal. Uh, the the level of fish meal within the rainbow trout diets diets were uh, uh, significantly lower, much much more muted, and much more consistent with uh, uh, um, commercially relevant uh, diets. Uh, within the series, uh, the plant-based series uh, of diets, certainly they're, they're, these were devoid of fish meal. So the plant-based uh, diet uh, was completely devoid of fish meal. So this was a plant-based only diet. And here we're replacing the plant proteins with increasing levels of silpro. For, fish, for the fish meal based diet, the, the, the control is at 20% fish meal uh, with no silpro. And then here we replace half of that uh, fish meal content with silpro. So we have a 10% fish meal inclusion and then a 10% silpro inclusion. Uh, and here we had a, a variety of, of different plant uh, protein sources, uh, all of which uh, you know, do tend to make a, a, an appearance in, in, in aqua feed diets. So nothing completely un, un, unrealistic uh, here. In terms of diet composition, uh, certainly we were targeting for isonitrogenous uh, diets. So we're looking at, at approximately 44% um, uh, uh, crude protein. Uh, all of them were, were above, uh, were at, at the very least at, at the control, which was a 43.3% crude protein um, with uh, a, a approximately 19% uh, uh, total lipids here. 
So looking at our results, uh, I, I think I mentioned six weeks is typically when we start to see significant differences when there are significant differences. And, and that was born true uh, within this trial as well. Uh, so here we're looking at um, uh, all, all five treatment groups over the course of the 12 week period. Uh, the the plant-based only, as you would expect, uh, did significantly worse than, than the rest of the diets. So the only statistically different, uh, different diet was a plant-based only, which was significantly lower than all of the other four uh, treatment groups. Both the plant-based uh, diets with the addition of Silpro um, were statistically improved versus that, that uh, plant-based control. Uh, and, and certainly the fish meal-based diets uh, were, were at, at, the, at the top there. Uh, but amongst these four, there, there were no statistical differences, so they were comparable. Um, but within each uh, uh, treatment structure type, uh, the addition of Silpro um, certainly had a comparable performance to, to fish meal and certainly much better than, than its plant-based uh, alternative. So I wanted to recall uh, one of our early trials that we did uh, uh, in the early days of, of this, this project. Uh, it was outside of the project, um, but it was our, our really our first endeavor into evaluating cell feed or uh, evaluating cell pro with the, within the context of, uh, of aqua feed performance. And here we, we see the exact same, same, exact same trend within hybrid striped bass, which is particularly uh, important here, here in the United States. Um, so hybrid shrimp bass are, are also carnivorous fish, not, not quite the same requirements as, as salmonids, but, but still carnivorous in nature. Uh, here we're looking at, at, at an inclusion, a silver inclusion level of, of certainly the control, 10% and 20%. Uh, though in this case, we are replacing plant proteins, uh, not fish meal. So the fish meal content is, is, is held con constant across the three. But what we see is that uh, the 10% silpro diet does do uh, better than both the control as well as the 20% the, the diet. So we see about a 10% increase in, in body weight gain at, at this eight week mark uh, compared to both the control and the 20% inclusion. And these are statistically different beginning at that six week mark. So beginning at, at six weeks, we start to see uh, mean separation as, as we, we proceed throughout the trial. So, so clearly the, that six week mark is, is, is an important inflection point. Uh, we see that uh, the inclusion of Silpro, uh, especially at the expense of plant proteins, is particularly beneficial. Uh, but if, if the idea is to uh, replace fish meal, you, you can have very comparable performance there as well. So looking at uh, some of the other data generated within this trial, we see uh, that uh, specific growth rate was as, as you would expect. So plant-based only was significantly lower than, than its, uh, uh, its, its four counterparts. Uh, and again, within each treatment structure, the inclusion of Silpro uh, tends to either be comparable to fish meal or, or certainly better than its plant-based alternatives. So you can see almost three, three groupings here, plant-based at the bottom, the plant-based with Silpro in being an improvement over the plant-based only. And then within the fish meal-based diets, the inclusion of Silpro at the expense of fish meal uh, results in, in, in equivalent performance. Uh, feed conversion uh, followed that same pattern, although, although certainly the, you know, this, this value is, is a, a bit surprising from, from the plant-based uh, only treatment. Um, yeah, certainly that there's something to be said, uh, but uh, this is also a great reminder that, that feed efficiency doesn't necessarily translate to uh, your, your best performance. Uh, but still, it, it's a factor to, 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 to take into account. Uh, and certainly, again, within each grouping, uh, the inclusion of Silpro was, was not detrimental by any means, and in the right context can, can, can be beneficial. Uh, same, same, uh, same concept for, for, for feed intake. Uh, clearly, you can see the, the upward trends once you get to, to more palatable ingredients, uh, palatable meaning fish meal and, and or Silpro, uh, where you know, approximately uh, one and a half grams uh, lower intake, uh, lower feed intake per day uh, was, served, was observed with the plant-based only. Uh, nothing significant within the hepatosomatic and the viscerosomatic in, in indices, uh, certainly uh, um, you know, no, nothing to, to 
to, to remark here. It's uh, uh, unremarkable, at least from uh, anecdotally and from what we've seen in, in both the Atlantic salmon trials as well as the hybrid shrimp bass trials. Uh, we do see a, a, a general trend for, uh, uh, in a, depending on, on how, you, how you want to um, uh, place this into context, better utilization of fat. So, so um, we, we see either an increased uh, uh, fat content or lipid content within um, the, the filet composition uh, within the hybrid striped bass. We also saw uh, a, little, a little bit of an increase in, in adiposity, um, which uh, in considering that both the, the, the lipid contents as well as the energy contents of the diets were, were isoenergetic, um, this, this likely uh, points towards uh, an in, in increased efficiency in, in lipid utilization. So that's something to, to certainly take into account and, and an interesting area for, for further exploration. So, so with that, I, I do want to uh, wrap this up fairly quickly and allow for more time for questions. Uh, I think in general, the conclusions support what was uh, observed within Atlantic salmon. Uh, where we see no negative effects up to 20% inclusion. Um, if we're replacing plant proteins, you, did, you do tend to see a, a, a benefit um, in, in terms of growth performance. Uh, if we go up to 20%, you largely see a, a, a more equivalent performance. Um, I, I do want to thank Sandrine Skiba over uh, at, at NIE for, for her expertise and, and for her contributions in, in running this trial. Uh, she's been a, a fantastic resource. And, and certainly I do wanna thank uh, the, the Alpha Excel program and, and uh, the EU's Horizon 2020 for, for helping facilitate this particular trial. Uh, so with that, uh, I do want to remind everybody one more time about our uh, upcoming webinars. We have the process performance uh, coming up um, next week, uh, as well as the environmental performance webinar uh, scheduled for the, for the end of August. So with that, uh, I will turn it back over to Amelie and uh, we can begin our Q&A. Thank you.